to the Super Speedway. Welcome to episode 292 of the Super Speedway Podcast, recorded Monday, August 21st, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Young, and I'm joined, as always, except for last week, by my co-host, James Cush, who took that part or didn't put that part back into the show notes, so thankfully. I did. I forgot that part. <laughs> I thought, I was as you were going, I was like, yeah, I nailed it, and then you kept reading, and I went, oh, I didn't nail it. That's okay. You got it memorized uh, by now. I don't even need it in no, there. No, I don't need it. it. Thank God you're back, man. I don't have to talk oh, to myself. Man. Well, I, t- I tell you what, distance makes the heart grow fonder, eh? Yeah, right. <laughs> you made do an episode without without your hype man. Yeah, I learned last here. week that I like I can't even take a drink when you're not here because like there's yeah. just a pause. If I'm not talking. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing. Yeah, yeah. One gas bag needs another gas bag <laughs> to, you know, <laughs> fill the air so we can at least get some water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, well, it's good to be back. I thought you did a great job, man. Don't let anybody tell you different. Thanks. Yeah. I, I, well, I haven't heard from the whole, the three listeners, so that's great. (laughs) That's great. Nobody complained. Everybody's being nice. It's impossible for people to unsubscribe when nobody's subscribed. So we're good. (laughs) I know that's not true. (laughs) You're just doing a thing. Yeah. Well, that's fine. (laughs) Uh, well, if it makes you feel any better, I went on vacation and got sick for five days. Oh, so geez. I, you know, I guess I paid the I paid the ultimate price. You didn't get the Rona, get... right? No, no, I did not. Because that's I, going yeah. around again. No, I um, I did yard work before I left. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I got into something, and I it caused an issue. So I yeah. I started feeling better uh, the second to last day on vacation. I've had really bad allergies all week, like all weekend. So I don't know if it's if, <sighs> I think it's allergies. Yep. It's just that just, time of year. Just makes me, just makes me so ha- happy, you know. It's that time of year here in Michigan where you go from a sixty degree high to a ninety degree high. Oh, and back to back days. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yeah. It was. It's beautiful out right now. I got all the windows open, and it'll yeah. be ninety five degrees, you know, in another day or two. So. Yeah. I worked from home Good today, times. and it was nice and cool outside. I was sitting outside, but the mosquitoes were eating me alive. So that was, that was the yeah. end of that. <laughs> <laughs> Summertime in Michigan, baby. Yeah. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Um, you know what you don't have to love, though? We're going to probably disagree, but let's go. <laughs> Almost caution-free races, James. Ah, that's totally fine. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? That was uh, great. Yeah. Go bowling at the Glen this weekend. Walk into the Glen. Second road course in a row. Second road course with... we Was I, I was there just one caution or were there two cautions? I, I don't remember now. One caution. Yeah. That's yeah, what I thought. One. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. One caution. And for some reason, I really liked the caution free or nearly caution free race in Indianapolis. The flow is really good to that race. And for some reason, James, and, and I have a, I have a thought as to why it is, but for some reason this weekend just didn't feel the same. You, uh, your sentiment seems to be the majority, uh, especially according to Jeff Buck and his, uh, yeah. his lovely poll. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess people like new winners. I, it's the only thing I can think of. But, Here, here's um, my thing. I think that they have ruined Watkins Glen. Well, it, they've ruined a lot of places. They have ruined Watkins Glen by dumbing this place down to where we don't even use the racetrack in like three corners on this track now. We yeah. just use the runoff. Yep. And I'm not, I don't want to see somebody get hurt. I'm glad that they've made it safer. But damn, there needs to be some freaking penalty for going off the track like that on the, the car itself. Yeah. Is, is its own other basket of, of, uh, problems. Um, yes. I mean, when guys can't even guys can't even catch you. I mean, they can't even, you know, can't catch the guy in front of you. Cause you're all running the same speed. It's pretty tough. To, and like you said too, Eric, there's, there's all this room out there. So, yeah, you know, you, you can't, like if you do make a mistake, you've got all this runoff. You can just kind of change your line and in, in stride and keep on going. And there's not really any penalty for making a mistake. Now we saw at Michigan a couple of weeks ago, you make, you make some mistakes and um, on the ovals, this car is, has been fantastic. And in, in the fact that it's hard to handle and yeah. guys get in trouble and get in the wall or, yeah, and you spin out, out there, there and you flatten all four tires and it, it ruins your day. And exactly. that's the way it should be. You should have yes. some sort of penalty for screwing up. Yep. And I, 
I saw a good a good tweet. I don't know if I retweeted it or not, but they said NASCAR has the perfect race car. They just refuse to race it on Sundays <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, because the uh, Xfinity Series race I thought was really a solid yeah. you know a solid event and looked more like a NASCAR road course. But the I Xfinity race shows that the problem isn't the fact that we got rid of stage cautions. Right. That's yeah, not yeah, the issue. I, I agree with you on that 100 percent because it's just been, um, you know. For whatever reason, I mean these these new cars, and we've we've hashed this out so many times, Eric. Uh, but this new car just does not like short tracks and road courses, or maybe it likes I, let them. Me rephrase, it problem. likes it too much. Yeah. It likes it too much is what I should have said, <laughs> because the cars handle so good, and and you can kind of really get around these places with with uh, you know, and, and you know you know we I built a Trans Am car, and we're wondering why the hell it's racing so good on road courses. Well, and here's the other thing I, I was thinking about too, Eric, and I wanted to get your opinion on this. All of the sharing of the data, yeah, and there is like, I mean, how much, how how many, how how minuscule is it? The, you know, the difference between first and, you know, in this in this race, thirty fourth. Dude, I've hated this SMT data since it became began. It's it's almost like, it's almost like you know, everything is automated and we have robots to the robots behind the wheel to a point where yeah. you, you do see the differentiators, you know, you're, you're, you know, like AJ Allmendinger is going to find a way to get to the top five. Um, you know, Mar you know, and for whatever reason, Michael McDowell was super fast. I know they didn't get the finish that they, you know, they should have gotten right. on this day, but like they figured something out where, but, but still to that fact, like, yeah, some of these guys are, you know, breaking through a little bit, but it's so minuscule. Like, I feel like any given road course race, it's going to flip. It, it could possibly flip. Like, you know, Ryan priest could all of a sudden he's competing for top fives. You know what I mean? It, it's, yeah. it, I think it's, it's a very, very thin line that we are towing right now um, with all these guys out there. Yeah. I don't know. Um, man. I, I mean, I don't know what the solution is. Obviously it's a, it's a car problem. It's not a track problem. Um, I do think we're racing on too many road courses right now. Um, but yeah. again, it's not because of road courses. It's because of the car. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's ironic that Shane Van Gisbergen wants to come over here because things are so similar and the cars are so equal in V8 supercars that it's not fun anymore. So he's going to come race in the cup series where it's basically doing the same yeah, thing. Somebody, yeah, don't, don't tell him. Don't tell him what the secret is. Or he's not. He's not gonna like it. <sighs> I don't know, I mean, the, man. The the Chicago street race was was thrilling for a few reasons, but one of it being the track was wet. Yeah, let's just wet the track down. <laughs> yeah, that's what we, we need, need to do. Is water put some, trucks. Put some sprinklers on. I mean, I'll tell you what. That Xfinity race when there was oil on the track at the end was pretty good. Everybody was I mean, spinning on that. The greatest last lap in, in NASCAR history was yeah. probably at Watkins Glen, and it was because there was oil all over That's, the place. Let's so, yeah. just oil it down, man. Slick that bad boy up, or give him like Mario Kart type powers, yeah. where the leader can drop some oil or something. You know, there you go, or a slick track like you do with the go karts. You know, just slick yeah, up the turns. There you go. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. It. Yeah. Look, we fixed everything right there. Problem. Yeah. I mean, really, that's all we need to do is have some cars spin out. That's really the solution to this. Problem solved. If cars spin out. You get cautions. They're natural cautions. They don't. They don't occur set spots you can't plan strategy around them problem right. solved problem solved indeed <sighs> well it worked out for william byron gets his fifth win of the season um kind of say it you're not gonna say it i'm trying to get it going you're not gonna do it what's that will him no byron. i that's stupid <laughs> that's stupid sorry um 66 laps led i mean he dominated this race uh after michael mcdowell tried to lose the race twice before they finally broke um you never just flat out said something stupid to me before it's I stupid i'm sorry i it's, really love it i'm sorry it's just awful <laughs> it's awful i hope you i hope you keep keep on it but i i'm gonna be i to want you to keep on it know, just to see it fail well i know i'm starting to annoy you and others so <laughs> i'm i it's like i'm in my wheelhouse now so yeah. Oh, I man. don't you you definitely have a higher vision of William Byron than the rest of us. Um, well, but, it's because I'm trying to manifest. Yeah. Is that, is that what thing. it is? I'm trying to manifest my 
prognostications to come to reality. Oh my God, you just used two words that are way too I big did. for our podcast, I know, man. I really did. I really did. <laughs> but that's seriously what I'm trying. Like, that's what you were I doing have... for a week is coming up with those two words. Well, that's well. I've got a story I'll tell at the end of the podcast, <laughs> okay, but uh, I'll tell you what I was really doing. But I, uh, I mean, Eric, you know. I mean, it's not a secret, especially if you listen to this podcast. William's one of my favorite guys out oh, yeah. there. I just have a lot of, I don't know, I just have a lot of belief in his talent. And now, you know, looking at his resume, he's added a road course win. He's pretty much crossed off every track type. Um, he's, you know, barely 25 years old, and he's approaching 10 career cup wins already. Like, I, he's, I really have a lot of, faith that this guy is going to win multiple championships in the series. And I, I feel like this year, it's like the year I've been waiting for, for two years. Like I thought, I thought he was going to have this type of season two years ago and I've just been waiting on it and waiting on it. And every time he breaks through, you know, I, I get in arguments with people about other drivers who they think are better. And I get Tyler Reddick and Ross Chastain and all these people kind of, kind of poo poo me. I will cheer and, for Ross Chastain all day long. Cause it I know, but you. that's, but that's, and that's, and that's fine. And that's part of sports, man. I love that. That's great. That's what we should do. But I just, William Byron keeps punching it back and finding the victory lane. And it just, I love that man, because he's, he's, <laughs> he's delivering on what I would hope to see. So I well, just, it makes like sense different. because William Byron comes from iRacing um, right. where they race fixed setups a lot of times. So that makes sense Correct. that he's good in a yeah. car that's equal with everybody else. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I died, man. I, I can't say that Byron's going to be a multiple time champion. I think he's going to win a championship, but I don't yeah. know that he's going to win two. I don't think he's Jimmy Johnston. Let's, I don't think I, he's going to win the championship this year. Well, he's got a chance. He's got a chance. He's got one of the best chances. But I still don't think he's going to do it this get, year. Yeah, and you got to get to the final four to have any, any sort of chance, right? So yeah. nobody thought, uh, you know, at this point last year, nobody thought Joey Logano was going to, you know, win the championship, I don't think. So um, I think he's got as good of a shot as Joey had last year, if anything. So I feel pretty good about it. I mean, I was looking I was looking up a few things before the pod because I'm trying to I'm trying to put into perspective what William Byron's starting to do this year and I, and I know he's like Martin Truex Jr is going to win the regular season championship at this point like yeah. that that slipped from William's grasp but I think I think that's going to it's not going to kill their championship chances by any means but I think they're going to I think they're going to regret that um I just think bit. Truex but, is more consistent than Byron but go ahead and make your thoughts he is no he is he's uh, Truex has has emerged as the as the top candidate right now um that being said he didn't even make the playoffs last year so it's it's just a great little bit of a crazy turn of events there but right. I was looking at Joey Logano who has a similar resume who at the age of 19 18 19 turned full-time cup and by the time he was 23 years old he had three career wins he gets to his age 24 season and 25 season. He gets, you know, he gets 11 wins right at that, right at that mark and becomes a serious contender. Um, I think we might be entering the early stages of what, you know, what we saw from Joey Logano, those, those couple of years. Now we're, we're starting to see maybe the, the early stages of what William Byron could possibly be. And, and if you told me, Hey James, William Byron's going to have Joey, a Joey Logano type career. I mean, that's two championships right there. And I'll, I'll take that. If that's what we're seeing right now, I'll I'll take that all day for him. Yeah. At the same time though, like I don't know. I, I think you're I don't think you're comparing apples to orange or apples to apples. I think you're comparing the apples to oranges on this one. Because sure. I think I think Joey Logano's situation was a lot different. Yeah. Um than what he had Byron's. a team give up on him, right? He, he had mean, a team that's... give up on him one. He also um I mean he was kind of rushed into that ride when Tony left. Um, I don't think the pipeline was set up for Tony to leave as, when he did. So I think he started earlier than he would have. Um, and I don't know. I I mean, I'm, it, I'm glad we're having this it's, conversation. I, I it's think... tough for me because I know Joey was Joey certainly wasn't the top dog at at uh, JGR when he was when he started out or when he was over there when he was struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, but William Byron's not the top dog at Hendrick either. He's he's number three. Right. right. I mean, Chase yeah. Elliott and, and Kyle Larson are one and two. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's yeah. that's where the to, that's where yeah. the money is going to be sitting and, and Bowman's last. So I would say that that Byron's number three. So but he's not last, <laughs> which he's I think last, Joey was. No. 
Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. It, it's it's tough. I, I I think the comparison. I don't think the two match up. Um, but I would say I just think that it's just more competitive right now. That I don't think that anybody's. I, and I, it's not a it's not a knock on on William that he's not going to get two championships in my mind. It's it's a it's a compliment to the system, and, yeah, and the, the talent the, and the and how yeah, equal it is. Yeah, it's, it's hard to really going to be hard. You're not going to see. First of all, I don't think you're ever going to see another seven time champion. Um, no, that's done. We Those also said done. that after after Petty did it. We also said that after Earnhardt did it, and Jimmy did it too. Um, but I don't. I don't think with this system you can possibly get that many. Um, I think a three time champion is the equivalent of a seven time champion right now. I think it's it's that hard to get three. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Kyle Busch and Joey Logano don't have it. Um, right. You know, it's it's tough. But you know, I would say too, William Byron started and wasn't ready. And I think Rick Hendrick knew he wasn't ready. Yeah. I remember Kyle Petty telling the story, but Rick Hendrick also said, screw it. Like, I believe in this guy. And if he's going to struggle for four years, what, what's the difference if he struggles in a cup car and, and is honing in his craft in the cup series versus keeping him in the Xfinity series for all right. these years. It's kind of like the reverse John Hunter Nemechek, right? You get in the series and you, you step back down just to compete at a higher level to, to win races you know, on the lower, on the lower series, whereas William Byron took a huge, you know, amount of lumps early on, even in Hendrick equipment, um, before finally having this season that we're seeing now. Uh, I just, I love the, I love the breakout seasons because they're, they, they are, you know, a handful of drivers have them and they're so special Yeah. for, for some of the guys, like, you know, they don't mean what they used to, though, man. That's no, the one, I know that. I that's know, the but... one problem with this point system is they don't mean what they used to. Right, but to, but to get to five wins, and we're not even at the playoffs break right now. He's he's in yeah. line to get eight or you know it's could be a this could be a seven or eight nine win season, yeah. um, possibly. I mean that it's it's possibility now, and that's that's pretty special. I mean that's rare territory. I mean not that long ago Larson won ten, and that was a pretty special season. Right. Um, this is not that season though. No, and that's um, that's the difference is Larson. Larson had the special season and then capped it with a championship, which is right. so rare in the system now. Right, right. But I, I just, I, I spent a lot of time looking at the resume um, a little bit today and, and just thought, man, this is, there's something now. I mean, it, it's been fun to watch, but now we're getting to a point where this is, this is pretty special. I hope you're I right. Cause I like William Byron. I really do. Yes. I, yeah. Um, yeah. I, and I, and I'm glad that you pushed back because I'm, you know, like I, when you have guys that you you know, that drivers that you like, you put the blinders on yeah. and that's, and that's totally fine. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you pushed back on that because yeah, I mean, it's easy to be like, yeah, he's this, he's great, great, great. But also you have to be realistic and say, well, this team's left a lot of opportunities on the table as well. They're not perfect. Right. And he's not, he's not perfect. And I'm not saying that, but I think what we're seeing now is, is a uh, uh, pretty, pretty nice little breakthrough here now that, that he's going to have. Yeah. Um, Michael McDowell backed up his strong performance at Indianapolis with another strong performance here, at least started out that way, led 17 laps to start, um, won the first stage and then things just started to fall apart. Um, oh, man. drives through too many pit boxes, basically didn't understand the rule. Um, <laughs> and then the, the, they get that back and then the team screws up by too many men over the wall. So they lose it again and then they still were coming back. And then had the, uh, what the heck they have, um, electrical issue, electrical issue. That's what it was. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So bummer he, uh, and finishes last 36. Yeah. He goes from the top of the mountain to the to tumbling all the way down. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's, that's why that just goes to show you. So I debated with myself last week about whether his victory was an underdog victory or not. And I kind of came to the conclusion that it wasn't, but then thinking about it and hearing some of the other podcasts last week, I've changed my mind on it. Because that team, I mean, that 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 was the second time they've ever done that. That's the second time they won a race. It's the first time they've ever won a race like that. Um, that was definitely an under. That's a, that that is what you call an underdog victory. Um, yeah. But the fact that they were able to come out this weekend and back it up the way that they did, especially when someone like Chase Elliott comes in and he was brilliant last week and just just crashed the bed this week. Um, that just goes yeah, to show you that that's a big deal that what they did. It's, it's very, very hard, especially when you have fast race cars to make a leap. Yeah. Um, whether you're making a leap from, 
the middle of the pack to the top 10 or in Michael McDowell's case, like you're, you're basically, you're a top 15 car every week. Now you're trying to make the leap to compete, to win races. And last week he had a pretty flawless day. Yeah. And I mean, it all come unraveled (laughs) on Sunday, which is, but that's why it's hard. It's so, so difficult to be that consistent and that good, especially when you don't have all of the resources of the big teams. Right. Even when you do have a fast piece, you gotta be perfect, you know. When, when he said on Denny's podcast that if they if he if they play their cards right this year, they'll get a Hawkeye. Like that's amazing that they don't yeah. have that resource that every other Cup team has, just about. And they're fast. Dan Junior's got a freaking yeah. Hawkeye. Yeah, and they're fast. <laughs> yeah, and they're fast. I mean, that's that's the amazing thing. It's it, we're seeing it a little bit. Uh, we're seeing it a little bit with Track House. Like that team made a leap last year. Yeah. Um, to being a real contender and finish second in the championship. Uh, now you're seeing like the rest of the field has surpassed them a little bit, caught up with them a little bit. And now they're, they went from hanging with Hendrick to being a step behind Hendrick. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's just, you know, it's such a monumental leap. And you hear drivers talk about this as well when they race in the Xfinity series and they get to Sundays and they race with the, with the big dogs and they'll, like this is unbelievable. Like it's so difficult, and I think there's a, there's the race inside the race going on in the Cup Series as well. Um, and and we know these guys can go and they can maybe win Charlotte. Uh, they can they can compete, but it's 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 still they're still an underdog story trying yeah. to get to that next level. Yeah, for sure. Um, less than two hours, James. Oh, time of race go. one hour yep. fifty eight minutes forty four seconds. I'm here um, for it, man. I, I know Every you're week. a big fan. Every week, let's go bang these things out. I two hours. don't completely agree with you. I do think that most races are too long. Um, you know, and I, I tweeted it this week too. Club 300. I'm on Club 300. 300 miles for Cup races, um, except for a select few. The majors. Yeah. Um, so I personally, I would rather see about two and a half to three hours be the window, um, for me. Uh, two hours was a little short, but I'll tell you what, it was nice yesterday. It was really nice. Oh, to sit dude, down, wasn't it great? Watch that race and get done. And I still felt like I had my whole day. Uh, it's awesome. Especially my, my argument being, if you're going to, if these TV networks are going to make me wait until three o'clock every week to watch <laughs> right. these races, when I, I have to, you know, when we have Eric, we have families, we have kids got yeah. dinners and get them ready for school or whatever. What the heck ever. Right. Yep. Um, and you're pushing into seven o'clock, eight o'clock with some of the, you know, especially with these rain delays we've been having to bang out a race for a four or five, you know, before six o'clock. Oh man, I'll, I'll take that every day. I'll take that every Sunday. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I was so happy when that, when I was watching those laps wind down, I'm like, man, this thing's going to be done. And especially with the no cautions. Right. I mean, it was, I, I mean, I know that's the biggest thing is, is the lack of cautions. You add a couple cautions in there and now we're back to, yeah back to a decent length. Um, yeah. It is kind of crazy that the, the, the lap distance between the Xfinity race and the cup race are pretty similar. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. And I, I, you know, I don't want, I don't think I want every race to feel like it's gone by like in a flash, but no. I mean, now I don't know, man, nowadays, I, don't, I mean, I feel like a two hour window, even a two and a half hour. Well, window I think really that's ni- the advantage. Really nice. That's the advantage that formula one has is the races are short Um, and I think, you know, James, and this isn't a solution, but the nice thing about a two hour race is if it's, if it's a boring two hour race, it's only two hours. Well, and that's the thing with F1, every race is boring. Right. Think about all the action that a NASCAR race gives you. And if you can pump some of that action into two hours, even if it's not the best day, I mean, this one, most tracks are going to amp that action up by reducing the time. Right, and, and this race on Sunday was better than any F one race that oh, you yeah. watch all season. I don't oh, care yeah. if you're, I don't care if you're an F one fan, NASCAR fan or not. Like this, this a bad NASCAR race this year, better than any F one race you'll see. Definitely all season. Yeah, not even close. Yeah, not even close. And I'm not saying that because I like NASCAR more than F one, but it's just it's it's a stinker every time for Stappen. You know, every time for Stappen buckles in, it's over. Yep. So I, yeah, this is. I'll take this. I'll take this over F1 any day. I'm with you. Uh, let's talk Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott um, was high on everybody's list this weekend. Uh, runs himself out of gas. Bad pit call. 
Um, probably should have questioned three laps on the reserve tank. That, that seems was like a, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Seems like a lot of miles to put on the reserve tank. Usually those are good for like a lap, not yeah. not three. Um, but uh, yeah, that just uh, so I have a question, James. I have a question for you. We've talked about this a little bit, um, or at least you've heard my opinion on this off air. Um, but Chase Elliott continues to claim that the pressure is not getting to him. He doesn't care about the pressure. He's taken every race weekend as, as it is every week weekend. Bull and crap. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And th- I think this proves it to be honest. They shot themselves in the foot. The whole yes. Team's it wasn't Chase Elliott's mistake. It was his team's mistake, but still that is complete BS. Listen, I think there is nobody cooler in the garage than Kyle Larson. And Kyle Larson feels the pressure. There is no way that Chase Elliott doesn't feel the pressure. Yeah, he does. You don't think the Napa sponsorship is wearing him down a little bit? Right. On this one. And I I get that they're in the owner's championship and they're probably going to race for a championship for owners. And that's where the money is. But that's not where the eyeballs are. No. And, and you know, damn well that Chase wants that trophy at the end of the season. So, uh, and he couldn't give a crap less about the owner's championship. Um, and I'll tell you what, you know, how to know. He did ask about it though. Exactly. And that's what I was going to say. That's why I know it's getting to him because he freaking asked the question during the race. Cop out. Yep. A little bit of a cop out. I, uh, I was going to ask you this too, Eric, um, back to back seasons, the owner's championships probably going to be different than the driver's championship. I think it's going to become more common here. Yeah. I think this is the world we're living in with injuries with drivers having, yeah. Drivers sitting out concussions and stuff. The knowledge Uh, that we have now of injuries and I was thinking, it, it's not just our sport. I was, uh, I watched a video the other day of, I think it was like 2000s NFL things that wouldn't fly today. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like the, the hits and stuff that used to be like commonplace. I mean, they had an actual segment on ESPN that was all about the big hits. Jacked up. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, and that's just now you see those hits and you cringe and they've done made so many rules to get rid of those. So, yes. you know, yes. it, it's no different here. We, we know more about injuries and, and these drivers don't have to race hurt anymore. And I think that's a good thing. Um, you may call them soft compared to what the drivers of old and Hey, maybe you're right, but they're also smarter. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. the reason they're smarter is because they take less hits to the head. Um, so yeah. yep. I'm okay with, uh, softer drivers. Um, if they get to survive to race next week, um, that's the biggest thing. We lost a lot of drivers in the nineties and eighties and beyond. And I'm good with not losing them and having them sit out a couple of weeks. Cause they got hurt, you know? Yep. And that's, you know, to bring this back around to chase Elliott, like I know, I know chase Elliott fans are screaming for Alan Gustafson to, you know, be fired. Yeah. Um, but Alan Gustafson didn't go snowboarding. <laughs> Yeah. Alan Gustafson didn't left hook somebody. I mean, <clears throat> that team's in a much better spot if he's just out there racing based on his average finish for the season. Well, uh, he's in the owner's when, championship, so he'd be in the driver's exactly. championship, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, Alan Gustafson was setting up those cars to get him in the owner's, you know, championship, right? Yeah. I mean, they're still running good. Yep. Almost won without him with Josh Berry. That's all. You know, yeah. so a lot I mean, of Alan Gustafson in charge of that. So to be honest, this is a completely different story. Probably if he doesn't get himself suspended for a week, you know, that's right. So Alan Gustafson didn't do that either. I know. So that's that what I'm being said, if the most popular driver doesn't make the playoffs as Hendrick, you can't just leave everything as is. Can you, don't you have to do something? Well, what are you going to do? You're going to mix up the 48 and the nine. Cause that's the only pairing you could. I don't know. I'm not breaking up the five and the 24 right now. Yeah. Those are championship contenders. You'd leave them alone. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like you can't, if you sit on your hands, you just, I don't know. I don't know. It's I, tough, it, man. They won a championship less than three years ago. Yeah. And I mean, and, again, it's, it's, you can see the reasons they're right in front of you. It's real obvious. The reasons that mm-hmm. chase is where he's at. Um, you know, it's two, two it's... important moments that occurred during the season. Um, one of well, which it's... wasn't even racing related, you know, it's the same thing with Alex Bowman. I mean, that car was good enough to make the playoffs yeah. and injury, you know, on a non NASCAR sanctioned race, knocked him out. Yep. And it's going to keep him out. Unless they, you know, unless either of these guys went on Sunday or Saturday, I guess Saturday night. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's tough. I, I, I don't have any sympathy for, for Chase Elliott. I have sympathy for the team. 
I think that team has been grinding and putting in all the work, and and he just hasn't been there. Yeah. And I I, I don't I don't feel sympathy for him. And I do think he feels the pressure. Um, but he also comes off like a jackass sometimes. Yes, in he his does. Interviews. Yes, he does. And I and, and I'm not afraid to say I junior or junior nation chase nation come after <laughs> me. Um, he's he tries to play these things off, and I, sometimes I think he comes off like he doesn't like his job. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, we can a lot of us can relate to that, but he just seems like he. I don't know. Chase doesn't have a fire that. You know, you'd like to see from time to time. Chase Elliott right now reminds me of Kyle Busch when Kyle Busch is struggling. He's yes. just got an attitude. He's got a chip on his shoulder. And listen, I, I was you there. Can't figure it out. I was there for his media appearance at MIS. I got to see it mm-hmm. in person. And he's not the normal Chase Elliott, which is, again, why I stand by. And, and Matt mm-hmm. Weaver disagrees. Matt Weaver tweeted me back and, and disagrees. And I disagree with Matt. <laughs> it is affecting Chase. It is. I, I think it's it obvious. Is, yeah. Now, Matt knows Chase better than I do. Million times mm-hmm. better than I do. I've talked to Chase, you know, three times in my life, and Matt's talked to him hundreds of times. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't buy it, man. I, I just there's there's no way this affects everybody, and anybody who says it yep. doesn't is lying to you. And he's got all these corporate partnerships, and yeah. And mo- no, I mean, is I, he I any any danger? He's not going to lose his ride. He's not losing his sponsor. I mean, no, and he could bounce. He could bounce back next season. Yeah, and be totally fine. Does he have anything to worry about? No, probably not. But he is. He is. But he's human. There's one more thing I think I want to say yeah. that will probably get me in trouble. No, no. <laughs> there is no there is no driver in that garage that is more pampered than Chase Elliott. Yeah. He gets to fly his planes, he gets to live in Georgia, he gets to do all of these things, he has all these freedoms, and this year it came back and bit him in the butt. And I think that uh, I think that there's probably a little bit of embarrassment there if I if I'm prognosticating i'll use that word again if i'm uh, if i'm doing that with chase elliott i think i think there's a little bit of embarrassment there because yes he he does live a different lifestyle than most of the drivers um and i'm not sure how many casual nascar fans know that but i mean he does i mean eric you know dawsonville pole room is going to come after you again man yeah you know he's I, got his he's got his little cult down there, and it's it can be a little strange. I agree with you to an extent, but I think that uh, I think Kyle Larson's got it pretty good too. Well, um, every time I see Kyle Larson get in a sprint car and do the things that Kyle Larson does, he, a- actually better yet, every time I see a sprint car wreck, I realize how close he is to like putting it all on the line to go play. You might not be wrong. Um, <laughs> But also, I feel with the number of races that he races yeah. and the way he races, cause he's on edge um, that, and I'm not wishing anything bad on him and I'm not saying it's going to be, I, I think it's going to affect him. I think there's going to be an injury or something that's going to, it's going well, it to, it's going to bite him. It happened to Kyle Busch. Yeah. Xfinity series. So he was doing all them races that happened yeah. to him. Um, it happened to Alex Kyle Bowman. Hart. Kyle Larson is also so much better than everybody else. It's just, yeah. He <laughs> it's is. It's kind of gross. He <laughs> so, is. Uh, he can pretty much, I guess, do whatever he wants when he's basically, you know, walking on water everywhere he goes. Yeah. So <laughs> it's pretty, it's tough, man. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't um, want to be Rick Hendrick and have to tell Kyle Larson that you're not racing sprint cars because well, Kyle, Kyle yeah. would say peace, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think I mean, he would. I got... think he's one driver that would walk away from no matter how much money you give him to, if crazy. you tell him he can't run a sprint car. It's crazy that he crawled back from the sewer that he did. Yeah. To have that kind of power, I, well, I'm glad you Taylor said that. Will do that, you're, man. You're, well, you're not. You're not wrong. Like, yeah, he's a bit pam- Yeah, he's a bit pampered too. But, uh, man, I don't want to say he's earned it over Chase because Chase won a Cup title too. So I yeah. guess it's, um, I guess it's you know the way Hendrick Motorsports is operating now. But Jeff Gordon's kind of running that show now. So yeah. Um, you gotta let we've had this discussion here. You gotta let these guys have lives too. I don't think you can put them. Oh up. yeah. You can't wrap them up in bubble wrap. I have no problem with it. I have no problem yeah. with it. Like, but you also but you have, have to live with the consequences. Exactly, and don't pretend that they, you know, just I don't know. You can't hide behind it either. Right. Can't hide behind, you know, being fraudulent. Yeah. Um, playoffs. We are heading into the playoffs, James. We got one race left to go here at Daytona this weekend. I'm um, going to be a fun one because there's a lot up in the air still. Um, well, there's a lot up in the air for one driver, Bubba Wallace, sitting on the bubble. Bubba versus everybody. Yeah. Um, Bubba needs, uh, he needs Ty Gibbs to have a bad day or he needs to have a better day than Ty Gibbs, a better day than Daniel Suarez and no new winner. 
pretty much. Yeah, don't win. Well, or that or don't be eligible for cup playoff point or cup playoffs yeah. if you win. Uh, that'd be another one. Um, yeah, I he feel like he's in this position again. Yeah, <laughs> but but that's kind of where he finds himself. Um, what happens if Bubba Wallace doesn't make the playoffs? Oh, the oh boy, I don't even want to comment on that because you know what's going to happen. Well, the... no, I'm not. I don't want to go there. I'm just oh, okay. saying if he doesn't make the playoffs. This is his third year in a 2311 car. He needs to make it. If he doesn't make the playoffs, do you have to start questioning whether he's right for that ride? Well, I think he's got one more year. I think he, he does too, but man, I, that's a, that's a big F if he doesn't make the playoffs again. Yeah, it's not great. Um, he's kind of been in a funk ever since he won last year. Yeah. Um, I mean, God, he's going to be 30, so it's not like he's a young but this this has not been a bad season for him. It's no. just not been I think he could be doing better. Like Tyler Reddick came in there and has been better than him. I think that's probably you know a wake up call for that team as well. But that team doesn't get get going without Bubba Wallace either. No. I um, I, I agree. The table. I agree. So and it's, it's, kind of it's like not like Tyler Reddick is lighting the world on fire either. No, he's not. Which it's we kind like of he's... expected him to. Yeah, and, and Bubba is, and maybe that team's just not there yet, but Bubba's yeah. more like da- like a Daniel Suarez. There's like a loyalty thing going yeah. on there. Um, I hope Bubba's so. A bit I mean, I, I again, I don't want any, I don't want Bubba to go anywhere. I want to see Bubba be successful. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm a, I'm a cheerleader for Bubba, like you're a cheerleader for for William Byron. Yeah, um, sure. Differences sure. is that I do agree that William Byron is more talented than Bubba Wallace. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but Bubba's got talent and he's got an opportunity to he win some drive, race man. and he's very he important drive. for NASCAR. Yeah. Um, so I want to see him successful. I hope, I hope he makes it. Um, but man, it'd be a lot more fun if he doesn't, cause the story will be better. <laughs> well, Ty Gibbs sneaking in there somehow would be interesting, especially after this, this past weekend. Cause I, I feel like the Ty Gibbs. Dude, there old... are so many opportunities this weekend. If you look at who's, who runs good at Daytona? Who's outside? AJ Allmendinger is a great restrictor plate racer. It's fun, man. It's Alex fun. Bowman's good on super speedways. Chase, Chase Elliott, Elliott, we know, is good on super speedways. He Austin Sindrick has a Daytona win. Justin yep. Haley has won at Daytona. Justin Haley is good. Yep. Eric Almarola is is, is Eric Almarola, great. He's won there before, and he almost won a five hundred. Todd Gillen's a good super speedway racer. Corey LaJoy is a good super speedway racer. Eric Jones is a good super speedway racer. Oh, Ty, Eric Austin Jones. Dillon. Eric Jeez. Jones. I mean, dude, this is everybody's got a chance. <laughs> I I think the only person I would really want to see knock Bub out is Eric Jones. That yeah. would that would make me pretty happy. Yeah, um, I would like. But to see that other one. than that, I mean, the storylines are kind of fun. Like if Ty Gibbs can figure this thing out, um, it'd be kind of fun. He's just not. I don't know if he's he's going to be able to pull it off. But dude, this this race is a lot of fun. I yeah. love the way that this race sets up. Even with it'd be yeah, it'd be more fun if like there was more open spots available. But I mean, still, we've got, I mean, we got an elimination race. This is great. I there's a this. spot available. That's all that matters. That's right. It, it makes really it is. There's all a, that and there's always going to be a spot. There's always going to be one spot available. Yeah. You know, it's pretty much a guarantee. James, so I, fun. I don't want to get a, get, put the cart ahead of the horse right now. Um, but right now, partly cloudy sun on Saturday, 89 Ooh. degrees is the weather for oh, Daytona. Boy. So yeah, baby. fingers crossed that we can avoid the weather this year and we just have a straight up race. Well, we don't wreck them all going into turn one. No, we'll find out. I, I'm not even going to comment because I think we're cursed. So, yeah, right. <laughs> Put some rain tires on them. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's going to be fun. Uh, we'll talk more about Daytona here coming up. But uh, anything else with uh, with Watkins Glen? We 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 filled a lot of time. We sure did. We got in, it was pretty we got terrible. Some, I mean, it really well, was. Know, it wasn't a good race, James. It wasn't. I, I was. It wasn't. I was gone for a week and I had a lot to get off my chest. So, <laughs> it wasn't a good race, but we're all. It's all right. We can have some of those. The problem. The problem with the not a good race thing right now is it's the. It's not that we're not having good races. It's that we're consistently not having good races at the same places. Yes, we're consistently having yeah. bad road course races. We're consistently having bad short track races. Um, that's the issue. It's not well, the fact that we had a bad race. Everybody screams, well, you got to go to one place, you know, once a year. And yeah. it's like, well, that would have been great. Like Watkins Glen was, was that place for many, many years. And Watkins Glen has been really good in the past. It's just we've got got some issues with this car. we got to figure out. But man, I don't want to get rid of all Glen. the runoff, man. Let's 
Let's run the boot once just to do it. No, I don't want to run the boot. But don't boot. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't think it adds anything to the track. But no, other than the fact that it's longer. it's you know it provides a section of the track that they're not used to, so maybe it makes them think. I don't know. Right. Let, I, just just oil it down. That's all we need to do. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. I just lost my mouse here on my computer. Um, but there it is. It's back. Uh, as you mentioned, um, ninth victory, uh, 205 cup series races for William Byron. Um, it is, uh, let's see. Fifth victory, 12th top 10 in 2023, uh, fifth consecutive cup series win for Hendrick motorsports at Watkins Glen. Um, let's see. Brad Keselowski, Kevin the Harvick. Har- What's that? I was going to say it's the 100th win for the 24 car. Yeah. That was a good one. That's a good one. Yep. Between uh, between Jeff Gordon and William Byron. Um, Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, both clinched playoff spots uh, with the result of this one. Ky, uh, Ty Gibbs, fifth place finish, was the highest finishing rookie. Ty, Ty Gibbs had a good day. He is he is starting to get it together. Yeah. The more like going to places for the second time, you're seeing a little bit of a jump from him. And I, I'm, I'm here for it. Yes. Yeah. He's he he. He can be good when he's fiery. Yeah, he's he's gonna get one soon. He's gonna get one. He, I, yep. he, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets one before the end of the season, but he's he's he, coming. He's getting there soon. Yeah, this is a really he's finishing the season strong, and that's what you want out of a rookie campaign. Like I, that's kind of I think what we expected from Ty Gibbs is to kind of I, I, I you know he's been quiet, but starting to put it together. Yeah, um, and I, I like seeing it. Uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series was in action the day before. Uh, it was the uh, Shriners Children's 200 uh, at Watkins Glen, whopping 86 laps compared to what was it, 90 for the cup race? So 90 for the cup race, <laughs> so yeah. Close. Uh, yeah. Ty Gibbs runs away with this one as well. Uh, 70 <laughs> laps led, and then uh, then he ran into Sam Mayer. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, that started it, and then Sam Mayer finished it. I guess. Yeah. Um, oh, man, Sam Mayer Yikes. leads eight laps to get the win here in this one. Uh, Sheldon Creed, man, I thought he might have been gonna pull it off. Uh, gets another second place for Sheldon. He um, tried. Second place is pretty consistent for Sheldon Creed. That's that's where he always ends up. But yep. uh, let's talk about the Sam Mayer, um, uh, Ty Gibbs situation. James, what uh, what do you think of the that little kerfuffle? I don't know if I like what Sam Mayer did. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty egregious, I think. Um, yeah. I don't know if he meant to wreck him, but he definitely meant to get in there. He wheel, did not, he did he wheel did. hop, though. I, I give him well, a little bit. And I think he, he wheel hopped He conveniently hit that. the car that was the problem that he had, though. <laughs> well, I, and I think he wheel hopped for that that reason. He, he was coming in there hot. Here's the so. thing, though. The restart before that... Gibbs pretty much puts him in the barriers, um, runs him into the guardrail. And my argument is that this is not Ty Gibbs series anymore. He is the visitor in this series. Sam Mayer is racing for a championship in this series. Ty Gibbs is racing for a trophy only. And you have to show a certain level of respect to these guys. And Ty Gibbs does it in the cup series. He respects the guys in the cup series. He doesn't ride, drive like a jackass in the cup series. He does not respect these guys in the series. No, you, you, that's you, a great point. As a visitor, you should, and he should not be affecting these guys as days. He should race them with a higher level of respect than what he's racing in the cup series. So when you go and you disrespect them, you get what you, you know, deserve. And I can think I, he got what he deserved. I, can I play devil's advocate? Go for it. He, he's the reigning champ. Respect Ty Gibbs. Yeah, uh, he, he is, to, but he he's gets, not racing for points in this series. It doesn't matter. He gets to come in there whenever he wants. He's nah. the champ. Nope. He's the champ, and he gets to come in, and he gets to go and get trophies. That's what he gets to do. Yes, he can win all he wants, but he doesn't get to rough these guys up. And, the the you know, the issue isn't just that he cut Sam Mayer off. It's that he got into it with Sam Mayer. I mean, this is this is these two have a history. Long oh, history, yeah. Um, so and it's Ty not... Gibbs eviscerated him. Yeah. <laughs> after the after the race, I thought. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he wasn't wrong. I'm glad he got his second win and, and more starts than me. But it I have sounded a little snotty, if you ask it me. It was but... pretty snotty. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I don't know. At least he didn't. At least he didn't go and punch him. So I guess I don't I know. I mean, I'll tell you what. It was fun to watch. Oh yeah, man. That's the point. I mean, that's I don't the really Xfinity. care a whole lot for either of them, so they can go ahead and wreck each other all day long. That's the point of the Xfinity series. <laughs> it should just be, you know, fun to watch. I really wanted to see Sheldon Creed win, but I did not want him to win that way. 
I want to see. No. I want to see him earn a win, but we need to see all Shelvin Cream in victory lane at some point. Because, some point, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's time, man. He's got so many second place finishes. He's getting. He, he's an old dog now in that in that series. Yeah. So yeah, I'd like to see him figure it out here soon. Yeah. Um. Anything else with this one to talk about? Really? I mean. Um, a lot of attrition, but other than that, no, it was, uh, I mean, it was a good, I mean, this race, I mean, they were racy, um, lots yeah. of cautions, but yeah, this, this was a racy, I mean, there was a, that was a big accident late. Yeah. Um, but other than that, yeah, I mean, this was a pretty standard x Xfinity series race. I, I, I just like Watkins Glen when it's good and that, this was yeah. good. This yeah. Was I'm good. a little tossed in this one cause I watched it, um, pretty late. I think I started watching it like 12 o'clock and. <laughs> Finished yeah. about two in the morning, so or oh, two thirty in the morning. I don't know how you do it, man. I yeah. Can't do it. So I was. I mean, I might. There's a possibility I probably slept through a few parts, um, but uh, but did did wake up for the end at least. <laughs> yeah. So that's good. But uh, but yeah. Um, I, it, it, what I saw was great. I thought it was a good race. Um, again, I will argue that just about everywhere the Xfinity series is one of the best series out there. Yep. Um Don't don't sleep on a series. You it's worth watching. It's worth uh. It's worth making sure you got the CW before uh, 2025. Let's put it <laughs> yeah. that way. Yep, that's right. <sighs> All right, James. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me go through my favorite part here real quick. Uh, highest finishing rookie, Chandler Smith, with an eighth place finish. Uh, second victory for Sam Mayer. 74 starts in NASCAR Xfinity, Xfinity Series. Um, it's also a second win of the season. Uh, setting him up pretty well going into the playoffs for, uh, for the Xfinity Series, which is coming yes, up sir. here in a few races. Uh, let's talk some news. We got some news to discuss, James. Um, let's start with NASCAR posting thousands, thousands, is it thousands of old uh, races? Hundreds yeah. of old races, at least. Uh, we say hundreds. Hundreds is hundreds and thousands. Yeah. Yeah. Of classic races to classics.nascar.com. Uh, yep. commercial free most in their entirety. There's even some old clips from like the Detroit fairground. There's a Langhorn clip on there. Um, some select races that are missing for odd reasons, or we don't know the reasons. Um, but yeah, um, this is, uh, this is probably one of the coolest things NASCAR has done online. Don't you think it's the, it's the best thing they've done with their 75th anniversary? Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, this is, we got a whiff of this cause I sent you a link before the official announcement came out. Right. Cause I, but I thought it was just the 75. Yeah, races. me too. And then they unloaded on us, and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, you can got- go You go to classics.nascar.com. You can search by year. You can search by track. Um, and there's just, I mean, everything on here. It, it is I, so cool. I jokingly, I think I jokingly sent you, like, a couple of grapes because not every race is on here. Yeah. We got, should make that clear. Like, there was a couple I noticed that were missing only because I attended some of them. Right. And uh, like Ernie Irvin winning at Michigan in 97. I feel like that should be. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if there's like a reason they're not there or if they're, they're planning on adding them later. Yeah, that could be curious. And that could be. Yep. But either way, I mean, gripe about what, right? I mean, this is awesome. It's a whole catalog of all the races. You can go back and yeah. um, Just watch old NASCAR races and from our era. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah, Very like cool. almost my entire like childhood of races at Michigan is on here. There's a couple missing, but I was I was going back and watching some old ones. I, I've watched so many of these races already. It's just ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Um you, if you if you miss the old if you miss the nineties, man, it go back and watch some nineties NASCAR. Our era, man. Oh. Some good stuff. Inject that into my veins, nineties NASCAR. Yeah. You can skip the, the C O T era. Um that one's okay to skip, but go ahead go go back and watch the old uh the old nineties cup series. Yeah. Back when it was all about horsepower, man. Oh, in 2014. What a, what a season that was too. Yeah. That's another one. I'd like to revisit <laughs> a little bit because cars were just flying. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, uh, yeah, good stuff, man. Really we, cool. we got an interesting silly season announcement last week, James. Uh, yeah, this was a good one. Yeah. Austin Hill returning to RCR in the Xfinity series for 2024. I think everybody had him pegged for the colleague car when Justin Haley left. Uh, including maybe Chris Rice because he posted on Twitter. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> um, but I think that was yeah, I think yeah. that was him responding to rumors that he obviously knew were not true, um, and and you know making fun of everybody else. But uh, yeah, yep. very interesting, man. I I was not expecting this. <clears throat> yeah, I wonder. 
part of me wonders if I, I, this is just pure speculation. Um, part of me wonders if Austin Dillon's looking at the end of the road. Yeah. Or anything like that. That's the one thing I was like, cause it's a multi-year deal. Um, but it's not specifically a multi-year for just the Xfinity series. The only other thing but, I can think of maybe is they're expecting with the TV deal to add charters. Yep. Um, yep. maybe they can add a charter, um, get I don't... a third car in there. They've run third cars at, at uh, RCR plenty of times. So yes, yeah, that's another, that's another really good possibility. Probably better than my original thought. So. I mean, I think if they're, they're pumping the money in to get Kyle Busch, I think they've got the money to expand. I mean, I'll tell you what, their race shop is just as big as everybody else's race shop. The RCR campus is amazing. Well, and, and that's the, that's a great point, Eric. That's a really good one because yeah, Kyle Busch is your rock star. And you, if you fill it in with Austin Dillon and, you know, and an Austin Hill, that, that's actually a, not a bad, like, good investment. Like, you've got a couple of, you know, you got one young guy in there. You've got, you know, Austin Dillon's, you know, holding the fork down for the family, I guess. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's that's a good point. Really good point. Yeah. We'll see. It, it's definitely interesting. I, I was certainly expecting it to be part of the Cup Series talk. Um, it's just another name off the table now for the Cup Series. So very, yes, very, very interesting. interesting. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know who's going to fill that colleague seat, but we might have uh, some interesting conversations here yet to come. Yeah, could be. Um, why don't you take this one next? Next one, James. You're the one who who saw this earlier and and shared it with our group. And uh, yeah, I know you're excited about it. Well, it's it's what we were kind of hoping for last year when they did that docu series with USA. Um, but NASCAR and, and Dale Jr. again, yeah, redneck Jesus to save us all, um, gets the Netflix treatment. We're gonna have a Netflix docu series on the 2023 playoffs coming in 2024. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a chance there, Eric, to yeah. get some eyeballs. I mean, good lord, I you, you know, Netflix has done a really good job with sports here lately um some interesting documentaries they've got going on with uh like johnny manzel and a couple, a couple other ones are kind of going on but obviously drive to survive um but this is going to get eyeballs on the sport i think people are going to tune in for this uh I, I don't know if it's going to be drive to survive but they're working with the people who did the last dance nice. so there is some opportunity here to get a bump in the in that young you know that young demographic if this is done correctly I'm really, really happy that they went to Netflix with this one. I, uh, I hate this. <laughs> I hate this because I was just getting ready to cancel Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Uh, good point. I guess I just need to gis- just give in and just subscribe to all of these streaming services oh, it's stupid. It's and stupid. just be done because I can't, every time I cancel one, I canceled Peacock and then something came up. Oh, it was, uh, I think the Xfinity practice or qualifying was only on Peacock this week. And it's like, damn it. Now I want Peacock. Cause I was sitting in front of the computer and could have been watching qualifying. And right. It's like, ah, oh, this is so stupid, yep. but I guess, um, no, honestly, I, this is awesome. It's a great deal. Anything to get more eyeballs on a sport. I, I don't, I don't really want us to go back to being the, the, the in thing again, like we mm-hmm. were in the two thousands, because right. I don't really want the casual fans. Cause they, they will tear your heart out so quickly when they move on to something else yep. um, and cause you to have to tear down half of the grandstands you put in at every track that you've constructed. Yep. Um, so, but I, we need new fans, man. We need, yes. we need younger fans. We need the kids to be interested in, in the sport. We, we need to highlight the personalities yes. that I think you and I, Eric, we get it with some of these guys, yeah. but if we can bring some of that out and bring in the personalities of who these drivers are, um, we've got a, I mean, NASCAR still has a little bit of an image problem and this is a really nice opportunity to change quite a bit, um, of, of maybe what people think about NASCAR and, and open it up to a broader audience. I, I love this idea. I have to get a, people in. I have a question for you. Yeah. Can the same sanctioning body, that just suspended a driver for liking a, a post on social media possibly allow the drivers to have enough personality to make this show successful. I hope so. <laughs> I think they can. That I was still, a really dumb thing. I still um, go. I'm, I'm so back and forth on this Noah Gregson thing, James. I'm so back and forth on it Yeah. because it, yes, it was stupid. Yes, it was dumb that he did it, but man, I don't know. I feel, I don't feel like the punishment well, fits the crime. The sanctioning body 
reacting after the team already took action is just yeah. We t- I think we talked about that. That's just yeah. I don't know. I, I talked. I mentioned it last week again, man. I don't want to see. A, I don't want to see a kid's career ended because Dale Jr. is not bringing that. him back. That, that's. I think. Yeah, that, I think that's that pretty clear. For sure. Yeah. Um, that's about as clear about as the fact that Tony Stewart's not hiring Haley Deegan. Yeah, he made that clear too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. So. Good point. <laughs> But I hope I hope this is a good I hope this is everything that the Formula One show is and more. I ju- just I just tap into it. It doesn't have to be that. It just has to be. It just has to be a version of it. Yeah. Just get get some of that. Just get some of that. You yep. know what I mean? That I think can be done. I think that's a possibility. There are great personalities in our sport, and we just need to capitalize on it. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity there, and we got good drivers in the playoffs man it's gonna be like it's yeah. a good mix of people in the playoffs yes it is so it's gonna be good uh, more silly season news uh things are looking interesting with the whole denny hamlin uh jgr situation um for 2024 hamlin still has not signed a contract um extension with jgr and uh questions are starting to swirl denny kind of denied or, or made some comments about how he can see that people are drawing similarities, or see how people are drawing similarities to the Kyle Busch situation. Uh, says it's different, um, but certainly can understand why people see it that way. Um, I mean, I think if the Kyle Busch situation didn't happen last year, James, you and I'd be going like, there's nothing here. There, there's no mm-hmm. way that Denny's going anywhere. But yeah. so there's other things that have been added to this. There's some rumors floating around. First of all, that Ford met with 2311 officials at Michigan a couple weeks ago. Um, and there's also rumors that Ford and Stuart Haas are going to be done after 2024. Mm-hmm. Um, so both of those things add to this mix. And I, and I think Denny's been pretty clear that a lot of the holdup is 2311. And mm-hmm. if they can't strike a deal with Toyota, Denny can't drive a Toyota, right? I mean, drive a Toyota and own a Ford. Yeah. I don't think that there's any way that that works. Yeah. Um, so man, first of all, what happens if they don't come to a, a, a solution because you'd imagine Denny's going to go drive for his own team, but they don't have a charter. Yeah. So does yeah, he run an like, open car? He's not going to boot Bubba or, or Tyler out. Is well, he? he? I guess he could. Yeah. I guess he could. Um, yeah, he could boot Bubba. Stick Bubba <laughs> in an Xfinity car for could 2311. Be. I mean, could be, um, well, or if, or if they have if they work out a deal with, you know, let's say they go to Chevrolet, maybe they they work out a partnership with Colleg and send Bubba over to Colleg or or something. Yep. You know, I don't know, man. This, this is, is yeah, this is um, getting messy and it's really late in the season. Yeah. And you know, I think what people should remember about Joe Gibbs Racing versus a lot of other teams, you look at Rick Hendrick, he has a lot of. Yeah cash influx with his own other entities right right i mean kyle larson is sponsored by rick rick hendrick <laughs> um you look at penske that's an ownership that has a lot of other you know ways to bring in cash uh joe gibbs racing does not they are family owned and they rely on their corporate partners more than anybody yeah so when fedex said that they are scaling back that caused a little bit of an issue and I think that Denny's getting what happened to Kyle Busch. I also think that Joe Gibbs knows that Denny Hamlin, you know, Denny Hamlin wants to drive the 11 car as long as he wants. However, Denny's got Denny's got an exit strategy already. Yeah. So there's yeah, no Denny pressure. Denny's not in danger of not having a ride. <laughs> right. Exactly. And Joe Gibbs can just be like, okay, Denny, go ahead. We'll bring yeah. in John Hunter. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. That's the thing is, is Joe Gibbs doesn't have is not in danger of not having something. No, to they'll fill they'll seat. just lower. Yeah, they'll just lower what they're spending on their drivers. Yeah. And put it elsewhere. Can you the imagine car. the savings of getting of losing Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin back to back seasons? Right, and then you'll lose. You'll end up losing Truex in the next year or two. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, they're you Cut know they're your slashing budget in costs. Half. Yep. Yep. You're slashing costs all across the board. Um, and Toyota. I mean, what the heck are they doing? I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I know they're, they want to have a certain car count and they're bringing on Jimmy Johnson. Why wouldn't you work this out to keep JGR with 2311 and then add that other Toyota team with, with Jimmy? It just makes your 
organization a little bit stronger unless they think they're pushing themselves too thin. But I, I can't see that as a problem. Every time it looks like Toyota's got their stuff figured out, they do they something don't. dumb. And David Wilson will say, I guarantee you, he will say something stupid and within the next two weeks that will make <laughs> us go, what the hell? What the hell is he talking about? Yeah. Because he'll, he did it with Kyle Busch. Yeah. And he beat his chest and he came out looking like a jerk again. And I just, I think that's going to happen again here. Yeah. I don't and know. Stuart Haas. Here, here's my thing with Stuart Haas. I mean, we, we know they're in trouble right. for a number of reasons. But also, this relationship with Ford has been a disaster. Yeah. Because Tony Stewart wanted to go get Kyle Larson. What did Ford say? Nope. <laughs> Rumors are Tony Stewart wanted to go after Kyle Busch. What did Ford say? Nope. And if that one's true, that's two. <laughs> yeah. That's three. That's three cup championships you just didn't even didn't even bring in the door. Yeah. Didn't even try. So, you know, Tony Stewart's like, well, what the hell am I supposed to do? Um, you know, that's one thing. And then on Ford's end of it, well, you're not performing. Why the hell should we keep supporting you? Right. So it seems like it might be a bad marriage here for the rest of 2024, which is fine. Where do they go? go? Well, either go back to Chevy or bring on Dodge. And that's what I'm wondering is, is but I man, if they were going to bring in Dodge, they almost we almost have to know well, now. Dodge doesn't have a car to bring in anymore. Right. They just, they're getting rid of all that stuff. I, I mean, can't see Dodge coming back in. Ford right now either. They just changed the Mustang again. Yeah. And Chevy's getting rid of the Camaro. So yeah. I don't know. What, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't see Dodge ever coming back in, Um, at least right now. But yeah, it's, it's, I don't, I don't think that's realistic, but I don't know. I don't know what Tony's going to do. Tony's got some decisions to make. Yeah, he does. Yeah. I mean, fortunately he doesn't have to think real hard when he's racing. He just goes in a straight line now. So, <laughs> Hey, he won at Eldora. <laughs> Yeah. Come on. I suppose. Yeah. Tony Stewart won a race and the car that Tony Stewart owns and the series that Tony Stewart owns at the track that Tony Stewart owns. Yeah, but he was turning left and right. So <laughs> that gates your argument. <sighs> well, with that, let's talk about SRX Corner as our, as our final SRX Corner of the season. Um, unless some news breaks or something. But uh, so sad. Yeah. We, uh, we're heading on out of here um, with the SRX series. We finished things off at Lucas Oil Raceway. Um, first of all, Beautiful facility, man. Absolutely beautiful good. facility. Yep. I have never seen a dirt track that looks that clean ever. It looked good. It looked good. And I, I looked up satellite images just to see what the place looks like. And it's immaculate from space too. Like they, <laughs> that place is amazing. Um, yeah. Very cool racetrack raced. Well, uh, Jonathan Davenport gets himself a win. Um, brings back the, uh, you know, the local hero and, and gets himself a win. So, um, I like that local hero thing. That is, mm-hmm. I hope they go back to that next year. Um, Ryan Newman wins the championship. First major championship for Ryan Newman. So good for him. I couldn't find one that he had won. So. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think that's, that's the one. Yep. Um, so good on him. Uh, good season overall. I think, uh, I, I think it was a win. Um, I saw yeah. some. Saw some videos. I was going to send it to you. Um, somebody said that they kind of, it kind of went backwards this year or something. Um, I was happy with it. I, I don't, yeah. I don't know that the ESPN partnership is all that it was cracked up to be. Um, we were, I think we were a little bit concerned about that. Um, yeah. The, the nostalgia of Thursday night thunder is great. Um, but honestly, when, when, Thursday night thunder was successful. It was really Saturday night thunder (laughs) and then they moved it to Thursday night. So I don't know. Um, I feel like, I feel like the series kept getting lost on Thursday nights. I mean, I, I know I kept forgetting it was on and I'm pretty diehard. I mean, we talk about it every week on this Mm -hmm. podcast. Um, and if I'm missing it, James, then that's a problem because that means casual fans are missing it. Their viewership was down, but it was down from a national broadcast. So right. I, I don't, I don't think that's that's uh, a good fair comparison. But their viewership was still almost half a million a race, like four hundred thousand a race. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, um, Thursday night is the reason Thursday night works is because they were able to get people in that they wouldn't have had. Right. Um, I'm not competing with any other series. I certainly think the series was more relevant with better drive or like more. Not better drivers, but more like current drivers. Yes. Um, I think it made the series more relevant this year. It made it more mm-hmm. of an IROC series, which is what Tony originally wanted to do with the series. Yep. Uh, um, I would really like to see more cars, but I don't know that they can handle more cars because they couldn't keep up it's with tough. the cars they had. Yeah. Um, they I mean, are, they don't, they are they don't involve Paul Tracy back. That helps. 
Yes. Um, and they keep yep. the, keep the radiator hoses on them. Um, that yeah. helps too. That does help too. But and and you know my solution or suggestion a couple of weeks ago of maybe running every other week would also help because it give you more time to fix cars. Yes. Um, and it also stretch the season out a little bit. And it's hard to get the TV window if you if you start going every other week you're pushing up against a lot of baseball and a lot of football coming. Well, James, we got um, preempted for little league baseball. I know. So well, I don't, I don't want to hear that argument. That argument's BS. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's, that's just ESPN doing its thing though, yeah. where it's live. I get it. When it, when it's a live event, they're not going to cut away from it until it's over. I get so, it. I mean, um, but it's still dumb. It is. I, it's fine. I mean, no offense. I'll tell you what, I'd rather watch little league than major leagues any day. Um, that little league <laughs> yeah. world series is fun. There's nothing, there's nothing better than seeing the pressure these kids are feeling. I mean, when the kid, you know, strikes out and he cries, you don't see that in the major leagues, man. No. Um, no. but, uh, wait, does Chase Elliott watch little? League? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, bam. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just talking about how these guys need to care more. That's all. Yeah. Right. Um, no, I, I, uh, I like, I, I don't, I don't want to change the six race structure. Maybe a break in between wouldn't be bad, like a one week in, inter- you know, one week intermission in between. I mean, I um, I want to run these things for twenty weeks. They're so freaking much fun to watch. Yeah, it's. it's I mean, hard I don't because, because it's. I I want it to be six weeks. It, yeah, it's enough to get you excited, and then it's over. Yeah, I really enjoyed this season. I mean, I I, I like seeing Denny Hamlin come in, and you know, there was a couple other you know drivers that have that snuck in. I thought um, it was the best season yet. I thought it was on par with the best season. Yeah, this was good. Season um, one was really good, but I think that I think this season was more pure. There were less. Sure. It was yep. the first season was a little gimmicky. Like it took us half the season to figure out whether this was real or not. We didn't know what the fun flag was. Yeah, that kind of thing. This um, year, it felt a lot more real. Um, it felt the, a lot more pure. We got rid of all the cheesy graphics and. Uh, augmented reality BS that they had the first two seasons on CBS and just yep. showed a race. Yep. So, well, and, and I think, I think when Chase Elliott came in that first season, that was a big, that was a big moment. Um, and now we're getting, I mean, that's become more normal. Like Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch. Um, I think, I think you and I attended probably the best event of the oh, yeah. season. I mean, I, I think it was Berlin the best race. crowd. Yeah, that was rocking. That yeah. place was that Eldora place was, was um, disappointing. How few people were at Eldora, and that's and that's tough too because it's the way they scheduled around Eldora is yeah. is tough. Like Knoxville Nationals and everything was all you know. Well, it also a, rained all day too, so that yeah, didn't they help. didn't have a good yeah they didn't have a good supporting show. Which you know we could have had that. They didn't have like, a we supporting close. show. <laughs> exactly. And, that that and was it. It was SRX that night, and that was it. I mean, we were at Berlin, Eric, and it was close, man. Yeah, we were. We were in trouble there for a minute, but yep. uh, yeah, I mean, one of the races got rescheduled. We had to run Stafford twice, but it was, you know, I thought it was a really good season. I, I love this series. I always look forward to it and yeah. uh, I'm glad, I'm glad it's back again. I'm, I'm, I, I can't wait to see what they do for season four. Any, uh, any wishes for tracks for season four? I want to go back to Berlin again. I do too. Um, Cause that was just a lot of fun. I, that, I'm I mean, selfish, that, but I think, I think that, I think the crowd made it to where they should go back again. Yeah. And I think I don't know if this is possible. I think the series would like to try to stretch it to towards the West Coast, but with them saying that Thunder Road is coming back already, there that's not possible. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if they can go south either. So it, it's tough. I know they got to stay somewhat close. Uh, you can't. You can go around the country a little bit, but when you're doing a week to week series like this, you can't. You know, it's not like NASCAR. You can't go to California and then back out to Daytona. You know what I mean? There's a track in Indiana that is a famous track Mm. that uh, has a lot of history, um, has some of the highest banks in all of racing. And it Mm -hmm. just got remodeled a lot in Winchester. That would be a great SRX. I think that would be a great one. Yep. Yep. Winchester would be really good. Um, I like to see him go back to Slinger. I really enjoyed that race the first time around. I honestly, if they said they weren't going to dirt tracks, I would actually be okay with it. Even yeah. Though the dirt track, but that race was so good. I, I, I kind of kicked myself even thinking it because, you know, the Boyer slide jobs. I mean, that was just fantastic. Yeah, it's racing. really tough. I don't want to go back to Eldora. I don't, I, I, I thought the Eldora race was, and a lot of it had to do with the number of cars, but I think that one was kind of weak. I don't. Well, and Tony kicked everybody's butt too. I mean, yeah. I think the fact that Tony's got such an advantage at Eldora, and I just think, 
I almost think Eldora is too big for the for the SRX series. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So I'd like to leave that one off this year, and I, I imagine they probably will. It's probably an every other year type of track anyway. Mm-hmm. Um. Man, you I know, I wonder if you could do a if you could do a road course with one of these things too. I think they want to. Um, I mean, it'd have to be a smaller road course. Yeah, there's there's some that fit that. What's the one that is it Parker Kligerman that owns one or one of those guys owns one? Um, I forget what the heck it's called. Oh, it might be Parker. I can't remember what the name of the track is called, but it's I think it used to be in I think it was an extra track in NASCAR 2003. Mm. Uh, Lime, Lime Rock, right? Lime yeah. Rock. It's, yep. it's Lime a Rock's really Lime. short yep. road course. Yep. Um, that may, would be a good one for him. Virginia. Doesn't Virginia have a one, too? That's yeah, I think, I think so. Smaller. Um, I, I I don't I was thinking Wisconsin International Raceway is a really cool track, but it might be too mm-hmm. big for the for the SRX series. I think yep. it's I think it's a full half mile and I don't, I don't, they're better. I think the SRX series is better on, on half mile and less. What do you think about them trying like a Martinsville? No. Defeats the purpose. Of I don't. Really yeah, I don't right. want to see them go to a NASCAR track at all. Yeah, I, I, yeah, have, I was just, I was just asking out of curiosity. I don't. I, I agree with you. I'm just wondering if they would even consider it. No, I think the closest you can get. I think if you were to go anywhere NASCAR, maybe somewhere like North Wilkesboro, but even that, man, I don't. I don't want to see it. I want yeah. to see them race at tracks that don't get highlighted, and that's like Rocky. That's Rocky another, Dam's too big. Yeah, that's another argument against Eldora. Is Eldora has the limelight. I don't think they need it. Like these other tracks do right you know let's highlight the local tracks that nobody gets to see right yep i'm so, good with that yeah yep but I man i love the series congrats to ryan oh, newman yeah, yeah um, definitely good for him um definitely was consistent all year and uh he was. and probably he was. had another win in the bag if we wouldn't have been rain short in the first one yeah he was coming for hamlin yeah yep. so yeah, good deal everybody's butt man he i'm was, bummed it's he over wanted, he wanted it yeah me too but happy it is because it makes us want it for next year. So that's right. Uh, yeah. uh, you got the preview too early, don't you? Is, is the preview early, or do we do? Don't we do the preview? No, we're after? good, man. Right. Okay, I left it where you had it, buddy. All right, well, whatever. Let's uh, let's preview <laughs> Daytona, Daytona International Raceway this weekend. Um, last race of the regular season before we head into the playoffs. Um. Picks. Oh, you already got your pick here on the board. Why? Well, I, I mean, I got to use them before the season, right? Regular season's over, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Last weekend, I gained 15 points on James. Doesn't matter. He's still leading by 124 points over me. Um, this is our last week before we race, erase the board and uh, and start back from scratch as far as drivers. Ten. 10 drivers for 10 races for a championship. We should reset for the playoffs, but because we didn't talk about it ahead of time, I'm not going to do that. We'll keep uh, the points there as they are and just run the full season out. Do I get a bonus for winning the regular season? No, no, oh, you do okay. not. I get a bonus for having to put up with you all season. Shoot, I would have clinched that like four weeks ago. <laughs> right. No, I'm just kidding. No, you're right. You're right. Um, <laughs> so James already has his pick on the board, but I'll give mine first anyway, because I get to pick first. Um, I don't have a whole lot of great people to choose from. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to go with a guy that would just be storybook for you and I, and I'm going with the hometown boy for us, Eric Jones. That's Eric Jones. Pick. I love that pick. Yep. Where did I use Eric Jones at? Oh, uh, Darlington. Darlington. Oh, yeah. Boy. Yeah. That was a mistake. Wow. Well, just so you know, my driver that was penciled in for this race, because I had my picks already done, was Noah Gregson. So. Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, don't do that. So I had to rethink that one. Uh, Ty Gibbs and uh, Justin Haley were both high on my list too, but I, I think Eric Jones is the one I'm going to go with. So, so I had some drivers I hadn't used, and I figured, well, that was a good time. Yours is a really uh, good pick. I have Eric Almirola. I have Ricky Stenhouse. Uh, I could have used those guys, but I still had Joey Logano on my board. <laughs> so, Ridiculous! It's silly. I got to put Joey Logano out. There. I don't know He's how you ended up with such good drivers at the end here. I don't know either. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I picked Kyle Larson the second week of the season. So <laughs> yeah, that, that did happen. Yeah. And I used Austin Sindrick and got 40 points out of him at one point. That I don't know ridiculous. how that happened. I mean, that's how, that's how you, that's how you do it. It's ridiculous. Uh, Michael McDowell. I used him for the first race of the season. So I got, you know, yeah. Just piece it together. Then you end well, up you're with the Daniel only one Suarez. who's had wins this season. You had two wins with Kyle Larson at uh, Richmond and, Martin Drix Jr. at Dover, so yes, yep. I've not had a win all season. You do have though three one-point races. 
Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> Somehow, you have, and one you of have them was Joey one. Logano. One of them was Joey Logano. Yes. Oh, man. Um, yeah, my highest race was uh, William Byron at Nashville, 46 points. Oh, you had, you had Blaney for 50. Oh, did I? Yeah, there it is. Okay, yep. Yep. Um, what'd you have? 52 for Kyle Larson. Is that the highest for you? 52 for Larson is, looks like it's my highest. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Ah, well, you're going to beat me again this week, but that's okay. (laughs) Maybe (laughs) Jones is going for a win. I I don't know what Joey's strategy will be if they're just going to try to get points to move up. So he might try to win those stages. I don't know. This is going to be interesting. Um, because there's, there's point positions to be gained here, uh, in the middle of that middle of the playoff pack. So, um, some of these guys are going to be kind of duking it out a little bit, I think. Yeah, it really is. It is a very close race in the middle of the, the playoffs. That's for sure. Yep. Um, yep. people aren't really watching that, but it's, it's interesting. A lot, a lot can go. Um, I think it would have been a lot more interesting. I think it'd have been a lot more interesting, James, if we'd had a new winner this week, because we'd yeah, have been looking been. at that Harvick Keselowski situation and really weird. There were like three drivers that were really close in that area that, any one of them could fall out with a new winner. It but. would have been fun, but part of me is like, man, I'm glad both of those guys got in. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm not, deserve. I'm not, I'm not happy that I wouldn't have been happy if either fell out. It's same with Bubba. I don't want Bubba to fall out, but I want to see a new winner just because it shakes things yep. up. Absolutely. That's what the 100%. system's all about. Yep. Yep. Uh, how about fantasy James? You got an update for fantasy? Oh, I do. Uh, hot rod. Todd was your winner. Tandem draft. Tona was second and freight train was third. Eric. Um, uh, you were 10th. I was ninth. Yeah. I at for- one point. I forgot about my bench. I watched the race live and I forgot about my bench. Well, I, I made a move on my bench and then chase Elliott ran out of gas. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, I, as bad as what I did last week though, I had chase in actually, who did I have on my bench? Let me look real quick here because and it doesn't matter because Baron Speedway is just running away with everything, but he's still yeah. first. I'm second tandem is third. Hamlin is uh, up to fourth and man, we got a really tight. So I am in second with 47, 33 and fourth place is at 47. Oh, three. So 30 points between second, third, and then at fourth is tied. So yeah. second, third and two fourths uh, right now. So uh, anybody can get second. The, the championship's over. Um, Cause we're all getting a reset for drivers after Daytona. So, um, it, you know, you get five starts each for some of these guys again. So Baron's pretty much got it locked down. He's at fifty-one ten. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there you go. Fantasy update. That's okay. That's okay. I'm I'm just going for wins. Uh, yeah. AJ Allmendinger was on my bench, and so I really, really wouldn't have gained much if I'd have been able to bench um, Chase. Yeah, I, I took Tyler Reddick out and left Chase. Oh, no, I would have in. actually total points forty-five. Yeah. But I wouldn't have benched Chase because Chase had his issues after, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Chase had his issues in the third. Stage, I probably so. would have left it the way it was. So yeah, I took him, I put him back in for Tyler Reddick and that was dumb. Tyler Reddick ended up scoring 30 points and Chase yeah. got uh, nine. So great. Wonderful. There you go. Um, any shout outs this week, James? Oh man. Well, I'm trying to think you put me on the spot with the shout outs every time. You want me to go? Week, I can go. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, I'm going to shout out Owasso Speedway. Um, once again, I, uh, I went out there Saturday night for the uh, JEG CRA All-Star Series race. Um, spectacular race for one. I love that series. Great little Midwestern series. Um, but Owasso Speedway, man, they are doing some great things out there. Um, they're, uh, they're announcers a little weak. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, the announcer's a buddy of ours, <laughs> um, but uh, which, by the way, he does a great job. But uh, but I will never tell him that to his face. Um, but the, the this place, they, they continue to put money into this place. The the new owner this year um, has a five year plan of things that he's adding there. Um, the the CRA All Stars have a have a pit stop during the race, um, but they don't have a live pit road right now, so they have to pit outside of the track. Um, the live pit road is actually in the works for next season. So that'll be added. They put the structure in for safer barrier. Um, it'll be coming within the next couple seasons. They put in all new led led lighting. They've put walls around the whole track. If you've ever been to Owasso speedway, you won't recognize the place when you walk into it. Cause it just looks beautiful. Um, there's tons of stuff going on there. I don't know the most of it. Um, but I know there's tons of plans and, and millions of dollars going into that place. So, 
Um, very cool. Their goal there is to make Owasso Speedway the top destination in Michigan for racetracks, if not the Midwest. So a um, lot of great things happen in there. And, uh, you know, I, we talked about SRX, potential SRX tracks. I could see Owasso getting an SRX race in the next couple of years. Maybe not ready for it next cool. year, but certainly beyond that. And uh, I want to shout out also Chase Berta, um, driver from uh, from Michigan. He won the race out there, CRA All-Star Race. He was racing against guys like uh, Carson Hosevar, um, but was able to pass Carson Hosevar straight up to get the win. It's his second win in the CRA Series. His first one was at, Bur- at uh, Birch Run earlier this season. And the kid races everywhere, man. He races his modified races, uh, late models. He was down at both the races at Berlin this year with the, the Battle at Berlin and the Money in the Bank. Um, he's all over the place and certainly an up-and-coming star. Very cool to see him get the win. Uh, I sat by his family the last race at Birch or at uh, at Owasso, um, and it was fun to sit there and follow his progress. Mm So um, very cool to see him get the win. Uh, Great race. They got super late models there this Saturday night um, and just about wrapping their season up down there. But if you get a chance to go down to Owasso Speedway, check it out. Uh, Cheap tickets. You can get tickets really cheap. Um, It cost me 14 bucks to go in, and concessions are reasonable, um, and it's a good facility. So worth, worth, worth your time for sure if you like asphalt racing in Michigan. There you go. Great one. All um, right. I got one. Okay. So a few, a few weeks back, I said I need somebody to come up with the NASCAR Immaculate Grid. And Dale Jr. is doing it. We're very close. I just need to be – I need one that's interactive that I can actually play every day. <laughs> so we're very close to getting my NASCAR Immaculate Grid. Um, we just – we just – I'm – just come on, Dale Jr. Make it happen, man. Dirty Mo. <laughs> let's go. Just make put it on the internet so I can play. That's yeah. all I want. All we need is Dale Jr. to do it. And Dale Jr. just does everything. He does. He does everything. Dude, yeah. so I, I'm watching his social media this weekend, and he did that bit on the track during the pre-race in the, in the mm-hmm. um, interloop. And he he has this behind-the-scenes video that he put up on Facebook and Instagram, and he's walking down on the track. He's showing the different things. He's showing the, the paint on the curves. He's showing the the go bowling.com signs and what's inside of them, the water tubes that are holding them down. And it's just like, I'm watching this and I'm like, he is, I, I've said it before. He is me. He's like, this is the stuff I want to see these little things that nobody yep. else shows you, but junior's got it. He knows what we want to see. Yep. It's yep. He's just a nerd. Like the rest of us. He, he is. Just, he just did it at the highest level. Yeah. It's great. Good stuff. Yep. Uh, how about black flags, James? Any black flags for you? Oh, this is where I'm going to tell my story. <laughs> so I was gone last week, obviously. Yes. And I'm just enjoying vacation. And you know, I I got up I got up north on Friday, and everything was great, and kind of just forgot my phone for a few days, <laughs> and was checking in from time to time, and I got through, and I'm enjoying my Sunday, and it gets to be about eleven or about seven o'clock at night. And I say, oh, crap, there was a race today. <laughs> I completely forgot Freaking co-host there was a the race. NASCAR podcast. Uh, yep. And I thought, should I admit this on the pod or not? And I said, no, it's on brand. Just go with it, man. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, well, first thing I got to do, who won? Oh, cool. Michael McDowell. That's awesome. I uh, can't wait to listen to Eric talk about it because I'm not going to be there. <laughs> and then I said, this is about now I got to about 715. And I said, oh, my God, I'm in charge of that fantasy league. I have to see how my team did. (laughs) (laughs) And I look, and I got Michael McDowell sitting on my bench. And I could have swapped him for anybody and gained, like, 20 points on the day. I'm just like, you know, what a fool. That's good stuff. What a fool. I do this podcast on a weekly basis, and I completely forgot there was a race on Sunday. (laughs) What an idiot. So I, I so I messaged you on on Sunday, uh, this last Sunday yesterday, and I said, hey, by the way, I remember there's a race today, and I have it turned down. I'm watching it. <laughs> what an idiot! I mean, I probably wouldn't have watched the whole. I probably wouldn't have watched the race, but I would have checked in on it. Right. But my God, I cannot believe I completely forgot. I have that has not happened to me since we started doing the podcast. That's funny. I can't remember the last time I forgot about a race. Unbelievable. That's hilarious. What a, what a doofus. Only me. I'm the only one who can pull that off. Yeah, that's impressive. I don't think. Oh. I mean, I've forgotten about the start of races, but not 
forgotten the about whole the race. thing. Yeah. Eric, the race had been over for like two and a half hours. That's crazy. It was already done. <laughs> wow. I like my phone was just in my camper. Just I just didn't even think about. It. I was out just you know living my best life, pretending it was a Saturday or something. I have no idea what I was doing. Oh my god, so dumb. Yeah, I've never felt more dumb. Well, good. I'm glad. And I was like, well, I, I, I rightfully got my butt kicked in fantasy for it, and leaving, leaving that man on the bench. So, what an idiot. <laughs> I would have put him in on the first stage. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, well. What are you going to do? It happens. <laughs> there you go. Well, for mine, James, I'm going to do it. Oh, no. I'm going to do it. I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to do, do it. it. And then, it, then I went on social media today and saw it again. And I got to do it. Do it. My black flag goes to Natalie Decker. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to do it. You I am it. so tired of the social media persona she is putting <laughs> off. Um, so have good. some self-respect. If you want to be a race car driver, be a race car driver. I can't believe you did it. Stop with the butt shaking on TikTok. <laughs> Old man shouts at cloud stuff that she's doing. Like, my God, she looks like a fool and it's not cause she's a girl. It's just, it's, I mean, I say this and then who was it that I just saw? Was it Daniel Hemrick that just had a picture of him shirtless or something? And it's like, come on, you guys stop this crap. <laughs> um, but dang, what I, people I want, Eric. it's what the people want. It's just, she's doing this whole, I don't, I can't just, if you want to get annoyed, be, ca- be look, careful, man. Just be careful. If you want to get annoyed, go look up Dan- Natalie, Natalie Decker on TikTok or Instagram or Twitter or X or wherever the hell she's at. Um, and just be annoyed with me. Um, I, you know, I was a Natalie Decker fan. I wanted to see her succeed. Um, I, I was a little annoyed originally about her posting pictures of like, her watching a car go around the track in the pits and you just happen to see her yoga pants, you know, and like <laughs> it, it felt like, well, maybe it's just an accident, but now it's like just too much. Oh man. It's too I didn't much. Think, I didn't think the term yoga pants would ever come up on this. <laughs> oh, it caught me off guard. It's just, there's, there's not a place in NASCAR for thirst traps. Add, add this to the list of things where I was early on. Yeah. No, you Eric, were 100%. Eric, <laughs> Eric has come around. 100%. <laughs> and, and this just gives me more respect for someone like Haley Deegan, who is just doing it as a race car driver, trying to succeed as a race car driver. And I'll tell you what. You know, Haley Deegan's got a truck ride and Natalie Decker's racing, what, three times a year? So I guess who's doing it right? So, no. yep. but she's racing this weekend. So Natalie Decker, by the way. <laughs> no pun no pun intended. <laughs> so, yeah, right. So she, I think she's running, the, is she running the Arca Series this weekend? Is that where she's running or is she running truck? I don't keep up with me. I'm, De- I'm just trying you know, to, James, I'm just trying to figure out which race is going to have an extra caution this week. You, you asked the guy who forgot there was a Cup Series race on <laughs> at Indianapolis. So I don't, I can't even really do much for you there, man. I could That's go, so I could go further, but I don't want to get canceled. I didn't so. think you were going to do it. I, I, I wasn't going, going to, to James, but seriously, before when I'm sitting, so I was waiting for you to finish watching the bachelor or whatever you were doing, um, before the, yeah. before the podcast. And yep. I was scrolling on TikTok, and here's another, you know, you here's know a me, Natalie I'm... Decker picture video of her walking into the race shop, carrying her seat insert with her wiggling her ass in the camera. And I was like, <laughs> come on. Man, we're getting a lot older than we were the first time we started doing this. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's I'm not a prude or anything like that. It's not that's not what it is. It's just if you if you want the popularity, like I honestly don't have any problem with people that post that type of stuff, but she wants to be taken seriously as a race car driver, so be a race car driver. <laughs> that's that's my thing. So Well it's hard to be a race car driver when you know you're Busy doing other stuff. I don't know. I'm probably being sexist and people will be upset with me or whatever, but it's just just annoying me. I was wondering if you're going to try to get too close to the sun, but that's okay. Yeah. I don't know. It's annoying. And no, I'm not going to go back and delete this when I (laughs) edit the podcast and post it. It's staying in there. I think it's appropriate for me to be annoyed by it, right? I mean, I'm not. I mean, I've been annoyed by it for a long time, so. 
It's fine. I think that a lot of people are annoyed with Natalie Decker. I mean, I just based oh, on she's annoying. the things it's, I see. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Anyway. She does the whole thing about, I mean, she, and it's the way that, and it's not just her. It's not her. It's the culture of influencing. Yeah. No, you're right. And they, and they get all high pitched and squeal and do all these yeah. things. And it's all of them. It's all these influencers. I don't. I don't want to see any of it on my stuff. Yeah. That, this they is coming from either. the person that got all excited at Aldo, at uh, Berlin for meeting Annie Agar. So and me. Well, no, she's she's actually cre- she's, <laughs> she's actually funny. creative. Yeah, and she's creative. I mean, she posts thirst traps too. So, but well, that's her job. <laughs> Like, she's not a race car driver. She's a social media star. <laughs> I don't know. Well, so is Natalie Decker, I guess. I guess so. I guess maybe, and it's just might be me being too old. Like you said, I don't, I don't know. Well, I don't we know. are old. Yeah. We are old. Uh, well, before I get myself in trouble, James, where can, fi- where, where can people find you on social media if they want to chat <laughs> at with J- you? At James Cush on, I think it's X officially now. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's Twitter. Just it's Twitter. Okay. It's always Twitter. Um, you can find me at T super speedway on Twitter. If you want to yell at me about Natalie Decker or agree with me about Natalie Decker, um, the podcast is on Facebook, facebook.com slash the super speedway. Our website is the super speedway.com. Uh, you can find old episodes of the podcast there. Um, Coverage of races, photos from the SRX series at Berlin, all kinds of stuff there. Uh, you can find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and Anchor, wherever you found us today. We hope you subscribe and continue to listen for new episodes each week. And if you go to anchor.fm slash the super speedway, you can leave us an audio message and we might play it on the show. Uh, NASCAR wraps up its regular season this Saturday night at Daytona International Raceway. It is the Coke Zero 400. We will be back next week to break it all down. Uh, tell you what our uh, our brackets are for the playoffs. Don't forget, James, you got to have your bracket ready for next week. Oh, crap. Yeah, right? Yep. Um, yep. And uh, and we will preview the playoffs and get ready for uh, the, the big part of the season uh, in NASCAR. Until then, everybody, let's go racing. Uh-huh.